Welcome back, Guardians. And today we talk about Crota because he was actually relevant at a certain time in Destiny. Certain things that are well known amongst everyone is that he is the son of Oryx, and he's pretty much what set forth the entire Taken King DLC because he killed him. Crota is one of the many gods worshipped by the Hive. He is actually the youngest member of this pantheon, but the pantheon we don't really know what that is. We aren't fully understanding it. And he actually is the heir to the Osmium Throne. The Osmium Throne belonged to Crota's grandfather, because his father is Oryx, and the Osmium King is Oryx's father. This stems back millions of years. Crota's sole purpose is to conquer Earth, but that is because of Oryx. Oryx forced him to do that. There's a lot of backstory going into it. Going back to a time before the Hive stalked the moon, Oryx raised Crota to be his champion. He earned the name Eater of Hope traveling to many distant worlds and devouring them on his behalf to chase after the Traveler. This gained him quite a reputation as a terrible demon among other races. What started his purpose that Oryx gave to him was because of this one time where Crota and his sisters were experimenting in the Ascendant Realm. He accidentally let the Vex into this realm. It was kind of a trick by his aunt Zavathun, if you remember her, one of the three children of the Osmond King. Crota understood that he really screwed up with that and failed to eliminate some of them. And then the Vex created the Choir Blade Transform. This was in order to deduce the Hive's sword logic and to defeat the Hive while attempting to become gods themselves. The Vex are a crafty species. The way Zavathun tricked Crota was she had Crota choose a location that contained Vex. Why? I don't know. This allowed the Vex to enter the Ascendant Realm of Oryx directly. The Vex were actually perplexed and quite amazed by the unique physics of this realm. Physics of Oryx's own creation designed to allow the strongest entities within to rule and attain divine power, i.e. sword logic. In order to counter all this, the Vex manifested a new Axis Mind. This is Quira, Blade Transform. This Axis Mind was able to unravel the Enigma of sword logic, and thereby allow the Vex to adapt to Oryx's Ascendant Realm. Quira's solution was simple. In order to gain power in the realm, the Vex needed to kill everything within it. Soon the Vex were manufacturing powerful new models specialized for combat, which they made wreck havoc among the Hive and consequently become even stronger. Oryx's children, Crota, Uranuk, and Urhalak, destroyed many Vex using an Annihilator Totem. You may recognize this during the Crota and Oryx's raid. But they were unable to seal the portal to the Vex. Quira built a device to hold it open. For a century, a stalemate between the Vex and the Hive endured. Neither race could leave their origin space to attack, other without becoming too weak to inflict any lasting damage. Eventually, Quira captured worm larvae for experimentation and discovered that worshipping the worms allowed the worshipper to alter reality slightly. As a result, it created a Vex priesthood to worship the worms, and then began capturing and killing increasingly dangerous organisms to bootstrap itself to divinity in accordance with the Hive sword logic. For unknown reasons, Quira refrains from integrating a worm with Vex mind fluid, but I'm happy to see that Quira chose not to. With all this terrible stuff going on that Crota had started, this made Oryx force his hand in this conflict. Oryx cleared his ascendant realm of Vex, defeating Quira's limited tactics and forcing the mind to retreat for a time, because that's what the Vex do. They have to retreat into time. Quira did not attack the Hive again until Oryx had built his Dreadnought and used it to destroy the Harmonious Fleet Invisible. After Oryx had cleared everything, he threw Crota through a Vex Warp Gate as punishment, declaring, Come home glorious or die forgotten. As he went out conquering through time, he established many monuments and temples for his father, while feeding him tribute in form of captured light. Skipping forward a couple of years and a few conquered planets, Crota came across the moon. Now, in the Destiny story that is barely sprinkled with lore, you do hear that there was a great disaster on the moon, the fight between the Hive and the Guardians. It wasn't the cleanest battle. It did end with a lot of Guardians dying and a couple of very bad moves by the Consensus, and Lord Shax, being the great man that he is, knew that the Guardians could not fight them. They had Ascendant Swords. This is something that Guardians had never seen before. This led to 500 Guardians dying. I know that may not sound like a lot, but for Guardians back then, even now, that's a heavy loss. This was also the infamous battle where the sky above the region turned to green fire. In the aftermath, a Vanguard classified the moon as forbidden, and no Guardian, under the Vanguard's permission, stepped foot on the moon. 
During the Great Disaster, a legendary Titan, Wai Ning, was slain personally by Crota. This infuriated Ariana 3, I've talked about it before in the Eris Morn video. She swore revenge against Crota. She led five other Guardians in an attempt to kill Crota, but we all know how that ended. It ended with four out of the six dying, with Toland the Shattered going missing and Eris Morn returning back without any eyes. And that is where you, Guardian, come in into Crota's history. You confronted Crota in the Oversoul Throne and entered the deepest pit of the Hellmouth to destroy Crota. Unfortunately, Crota's demise ultimately caught the attention of his father, Oryx. This made Oryx bring his dreadnought into the solar system, but I'm pretty sure you know how the rest goes. Anyways, Guardians, that's been it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, Guardians.